Uh, today we're going to be flying a VFR trip from Manchester City Airport through to Cardiff Airport. The trip is about 150 nautical miles and will take us probably about an hour and 20 minutes with this aircraft. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're throwing the GPS out of the window and we're going to be using old school VOR, NDB navigation as well as using pilotage and uh, dead reckoning. You know, the old school stuff. These days, people seem to be um, very used to just following the magenta line on the GPS, you know, so some of these old skills are getting forgotten, and besides, using them makes the flight, the flight a hell of a lot more fun, in my view anyway. Okay, so external checks on the plane are done. We will now continue with the internal checks and the startup, and then we will get going. Alright, so where are we? Yes, I had checked oil. Fuel pump. Yeah. Be hard to see. Let's get rid of the yoke. Is off. Get rid of this other yoke too, whilst I think of it. They get in the road. Okay, main switch on. Visory lights tested. Fuel gauges check. Yes. Flaps are up. Yes. Lights is required. We're going to want these on. It's bad at the moment. Put a heat. We're going to switch that, switch that on. Parking brake is on. Controls full and free. Of course, they are. It's sim. Trim set for takeoff. Yes. Fuel selector, left or right? Switch it on left. Brake is closed. And all in. Mags off, yes. Radio master off, it is. Landing gear lever down, it is. All right. Oh, and climb. Take off. Doors are locked. Controls. No. Back one. Back one. Engine start. Alright. These are on. Main switch is on. Prop lever. Full forward. It is. Throttle. Quarter open. It is. Mixture. Idle cutoff. It is. Fuel pump on. Alright. Time to prime. We have fuel flow. Cut off. Fuel pump off. That's it to the start. Right, engine start confirmed. Mags are on both. We're on full rich. All pressure. Check. Okay, standby is off, is it off, is it off, yes it is, and the light is on, volts are yellow, alright, on, light is off, volts are green, Turn back is on, vacuum gauge is where it should be. Give these again. Test it, yes. Alright, radio master on. And avionics as required. Slip full this tank, it's on. Flaps retracted, they are. Okay, so let's set up our avionics. We will be using the DME today, so we'll throw this on. That's all on. That's all on automatically. GPS is on. Now, we won't be using the GPS, but we will need to put in a few, um, a few settings here for the VORs. Okay, now the first VOR that we're going to be using 
will be... Uh, what do we got? 116.8. And that's our Sierra Whiskey Bravo viewer. Make it deactive. The second one that we'll be using is 117.45, so we'll wake that in right now. And that is our uh, Bravo Charlie November VOR. Alright, so that's the two VORs that we're going to be using. I'm also going to put in the Cardiff NDB just as a backup in case I get a little bit lost. And the frequency for that is 388. So 388. Eight. Switch that on. Okay, we're squawking VFR, all good there. Don't need the radios because I'm not getting in contact with ATC, nor am I um, on an online network, so they can just sit where they are. Everything is set up, I believe everything is right. Okay, so that's done. Center this, make sure we've got, yeah, 113, not 1013. So altimeter set, direction set. Okay, the first leg of our trip, we'll be flying to the Sierra Whisky, Whisky Bravo uh, VOR. That is going to take us about 23 minutes. It's 42 nautical miles from here, and it'll be on a heading of 195. So let's get this set up at around 195. We're also going to set our heading bug to 195. Okay, so we're all set there. Actually, you know what? In Nav 2, I might just put our second VOR that we're going to, just as a reminder, and I'll see it come live in here, so it could be useful. So it was 117.45. Check I have these both right. 116.8, that is correct. 117.45, that is correct. Cardiff is 388. Okay. Radios set. So all temp like, all temp's good. It's good, fuel pressure's good. Everything is looking good. Alright. Let's get this show on the road. Taxi out of the hangar here. To our right. Put in the mixture bits so we don't fail our plugs. We're going to be taking off from runway 32. Wind today is calm. I'm not using uh, real life weather today because as we're flying over some wonderful orbic scenery I wanted everything nice and bright so we get a good nice view of it. Okay, 3-2, that should be over this way. Before we line up, however, let's do a run-up check. Okay, brakes are on. Mixture full forward. I'm going to head up to about 2000 RPM. Okay, drop into the left mag. Less than 100 RPM drop. It was good, no, it was a 100 RPM drop. Right mag. Acceptable. Cut to idle. Hasn't quit, that's good. Okay. Let's line up.
Right. Trim is set for takeoff. Flaps are in the right position. Makes you fall forward. Props fall forward. Let's go. Be rudder. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. All right. Rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Timer. It's going. Cool. Oh, we should be. F oh, I've got some track IR, track IR issues. Please bear with me. I'm going to have to pause this in to fix this. Okay, that should be better. I had to close some curtains. Light was screwing within my track IR. Uh, we're going to head up to about 2,000 feet. Level off there. Get into a bit of a cruise. And I'll set a few more things up that I probably should have set up before I left the ground, like our DME. ourselves nicely trimmed. Alright, we're going to engage the autopilot just for a moment. We want heading hold, not shoot hold. Alright, now what I didn't do, which is what I really should have done, we took off is get a frequency whacked in here see how far away we are from the VR that we want to go to so we want 116.8 three minutes away to ground speed that's how far away we are okay cool we're in the right direction We can switch off the autopilot now. Now we may or may not deviate from our path, but seeing as we're flying VFR, if we see something that might be worth taking a little bit, a bit of a um, excursion to go and see, then we will do that. Orbex has put in, has put plenty of 
uh, points of interest in the maps. So if we see one, we might go have a look. Get a little high there, what I wanted. Just level that off a little. Or I should say the sand a little. Just a little off. scenery that you're looking at at the moment is or should be Orbex's True Earth, um, not south but central. We'll be flying to south but this here should be central. plane that we're flying in today is Just Flight's Piper Arrow 3. Uh, it is not the turbo version, just the standard version, and it is one of my favourite GA aircrafts to fly in X-Plane. I have a thing for uh, low wing planes rather than high wing like the Cessna. It's just something about them that I much prefer flying in. I like the old school look of these old Pipers. Dash is very cool. Okay, you got the paint chipped away and stuff here very cool but the thing that I like most about this plane is just how well everything is modeled it's the closest thing to a study plane um, that we have in X-Plane for a, a low wing plane of course when it comes to high wing a high wing fix we have airfoil labs 172 but you know systems are kind of boring are they they've got no soul they're very good planes but they have no soul these old pipers, however, they are full of soul. Ordinarily, if I'm flying through the States or Australia or Japan, I'd be worrying about airspace. When flying in Britain, however, I do not. The reason for that being, I have no sectional charts to let me know where the airspace is uh, that I should or should not be avoiding. And so, basically, I just ignore it. So I'm not spending money to um, buy real-world charts. Not when other countries supply the stuff for free. However, if I was flying in the States or Japan, then I would be trying to avoid the busy airspaces, the stuff that required ATC clearance to enter, that sort of thing. I say Orbex has done a pretty good job. Things I like about X Plane, just everything looks so real, and it doesn't take much to get it that way. Nicely trimmed here, hands off flight. That's what I like. Except we're running a little bit off course, I think. Let's head, head a bit this way. like it. Alright, how are we going? 14 minutes off. should do at this point is lean out a little bit seeing as we're, we're cruising so with exhaust gas temperature rising rising rising
just going to free trim now because we lost a little bit. if it was my imagination or not but I thought I could hear the nav morse code going faintly in the background so should be switched off now ten minutes into the flight so it should be about 13 left, unless we're going quicker than normal. 12 minutes according to this. At some point we're going to need to climb um, to at least 3,600 or 4,000 to get over some obstacles, but at the moment I'm just trying to keep us relatively low so that we get a nice view of this countryside. Handy dandy flight computer. See what the fuel burns like. Yeah, not too bad. Got four hours of flight in us. Plenty more fuel than what we need. I think still put the glass reflections on. Yes, I like the reflections. I hate the dirt. Just flight, I hate the dirt. So I always fly without it, which is a shame, because the reflections are nice. Just current ground speed, 120. We're booking it. We're doing well. Very flat country, isn't it? It's like flying in Australia in that regard. Australia's very flat as well. I mean, it has its mountainous regions to be sure, but most of it is just flat. Flat and dirt. At least this is flat and green. Should be around about 10 minutes away from our uh, next leg starting, which will be from Sierra Whiskey Bravo VOR to Bravo Charlie November VOR, which is quite close to Cardiff. Once we get there, we will be following um, the 190 degree radial and heading towards the coast. And we should see the Cardiff Airport on our left when we do that. If we see some big factory, I'm not sure exactly what the factory is, but there's a big factory near the shoreline. The Cardiff Airport is to the left of it. So that's what I'm going to use for a landmark once I get there. See, a lot of the time, unless you actually switch this GPS off or put it to a page where you can't see um, other airports or, or stuff that you've got in for a flight plan, you tend to cheat by looking 
over here to sort of get your bearings and to know where you are. The exercise that we're trying to do today is just to not rely on this at all and just rely on what we see out here, what we see here, what we see here, and what we see here. And a little timer. I'm not looking at the timer in there, I have a timer set up on my real life yoke that I'm flying with. But the timing is the same. I say this aircraft is an absolute pleasure to fly, very stable. Once you get it trimmed right, it just, you know, it's beautiful. It's very primitive, there's not much to it, but it all works. It's stable and it's predictable. Probably why it's a good trainer plane. They're the hills that we'll need to get over soon. For the moment, I'm going to wake the autopilot on. We're heading on. And although it doesn't have the altitude hold, there's a secret altitude hold right there. Give us an outside view. I'm going to make myself a coffee. I shall return.
All right, I am back. It looks like we're going to need to climb a little bit. So we shall disengage the autopilot. Give ourselves a bit more power. We'll take it up to about I don't know, 3,600, 4,000, whatever it is that I need around that number, the lower of the numbers to get over this obstacle. that a few issues all fixed now though this was back on track we should be getting very close to this VOR now I also notice our next VOR has come live Two nautical miles off in about a minute off. Gonna need to gain altitude a little faster. So many airports in Britain. Now, if I've done my homework, this little mountain range here, or hill range, we really call it a mountain at 3,600 feet, uh, should be the only real obstacle that we need to climb. I don't think there's anything higher, and I think over the other side, it's fairly safe to say that we can drop altitude again. Gives about an altitude we can clear it. I'm going to throw in an extra 500 just to make sure everything's safe. Roll a little and we'll start to trim. Just to get stabilized. Right. 
that look good. Little tiny more adjustment of the trim. Lean ourselves out a little bit. And you just get your temperature gauge just failed it stuffs around a lot it's the only thing I've found with this plane is sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't just, yeah. I don't know maybe I'm I'm missing something but I'm pretty sure our exhaust gas, gas temperature is higher than zero right now I'll just go by ear Pressure. Just a bit of altitude there. Dicking about. Okay, that helps. That whole time, <laughs> I did not have the CDI set to uh, VLOC, so we're going to GPS, and that's why this here wasn't working. As you can see now, we have passed the VOR. So we've got this little triangle pointing back, back behind us, so we need to switch over now to our. Yep, wrong one. Ah! Easier. There we are. Okay. We're going to probably chill in November. And going at 200. 200. Which is there. We head to our right a little bit. We will start to line up with that. So we get a heading bug set up at about 200. Okay, that makes more sense. I thought we were flying it a little bit too well. Just goes to show though that without even using that, just by plugging in the right heading and counting down the minutes until when you should arrive at a place, it should get you pretty close. I guess you could say that whole leg was just flown dead reckoning. Pretty cool. Unexpected, but pretty cool. Okay, so now, down here, we're going to put in our current VOR that we're tracking to, which is Down a little bit too much. We fix that. Now we've got a bit more speed. 
course now that we have changed our controls we need to retrim So how do we know that we're going in the right direction? If we look over here, you can see a little flag here saying that we're heading towards the VOR, which is what we want to be doing. And this line here, which is slightly deflected to the right, means that we're slightly to the left of the radial that we have set in, which is 200. Which means we're slightly left of the VOR, which means if we track a little bit further to the right, We'll meet up with it, but we're close enough. If you ever want to find a VOR and you're not picky about which particular radial you want to fly, plug it in here and then just turn your knob here until you have a two and uh, your line here lines up in the center and then just fly that heading. Right, this leg of the flight is about 37 minutes long, um, which is 68 nautical miles. And we're travelling from Sierra Wisco Bravo VOR to Bravo Charlie November VOR. And Bravo Charlie November is very close to our destination airport, Cardiff International. About 24 minutes off in our current speed. Little town over there, no idea what it is, but hello little town. I'm so happy that Orbex has come to x -Plane. It's exactly what the sim needed. Which is good to see a lot of uh, third party developers start to jump on board since number 11 came out. It's made a big difference.
illustrate what I meant before about finding which way you should be going because I have this VOR that we're traveling to plugged in on this one as well so I wanted to know am I traveling in the right direction to it well let's see where should we be going where should we be going well look at that we should be on a heading of roughly 200 in order to be heading straight to it as you can see now we are to the like left of 200 and this is showing that we are to the left of it as well so we need to head to the right line that up better than that if we what we got if we were to fly that heading that would get us there that was at 190 which is where we are now so that would point us directly toward the VOR radial which you can see here flying this heading which puts us on the 20 radial yep. 2-0 so we're going a little bit off course so we're just going to to maybe 210. 220. 220 will get us there quicker. When this needle starts to center up again, I'll switch back to um, my 210 heading, uh, my 200 heading. And even this isn't too far off, it's going to end us in pretty much the right ballpark. But just for the sake of the exercise. Get a little bit closer. Alright, now I'm going to roll out to 210. Ah, 200. Two zero zero. We're pretty much tracking where we want to be. We're one degree off. I'm happy with that. How can I tell we're one degree off? It's because this little GPS tells us right here. We should be at two zero. But we're at one nine. I can live with that. One degree is not going to kill us. So the VORs themselves um, aren't that accurate. They're out by up to, I think it's what, plus four or five degree either side. Mm, can't remember the numbers, but either way, the moral of the story is they're not accurate. They are an estimate. Very close estimate, but still an estimate. If somebody is watching this when it gets to YouTube, if anyone has any ideas for short 20 minute flights that they might like to see, please let me know in the comments. I'd like to do a number of those, just for YouTube, not live stream, but just 
just for YouTube. The longer flights like these, I'll uh, still be streaming on Twitch Live though. Four miles off, and it's about 17 minutes. I can't say in this route so far there's been any points of interest that have really made me want to fly down low and have a bit of a go, a bit of a gander at them. And the scenery's been very pretty and all, very photorealistic and all, but nothing that's made me want to go, ooh, what's that? Let's go have a look. No castles or anything like that that I've seen. I wonder whether in this aircraft, whether things like the static port getting blocked or um, frozen over, that sort of thing, whether whether that's modelled, and you know, whether these this goes to the same sort of detail that an A to A plane in FSX prepared goes to. I think it does. You know, whether you switch your pitot heat on or not, does that really matter? For instance, I don't think it does. We do have the circuit breakers, which do, which is very neat, which I don't believe the ATO planes did do, or at least they never did when I flew back in the day with them. Um, oh, the exhaust gas, gas temperature is working again. Weird. 
yeah, so, um, I wonder. If anyone knows, and they're watching this on YouTube once it's uploaded there, please whack it in the comments. I would be keen to know. Must be getting closer now as this is starting to get a little bit more twitchy. See how close we are. 24 nautical miles off. So a little bit to our left. Right into those clouds. I should be able to drop a bit of altitude if we're going to. I don't want to drop too much, don't want to hit those hills, but same thing, so I'll intercept that radial. It's 10 degrees out, 20 degrees out, and there. Descend a little bit. Just slowly, around 500 feet per second. Alright, it's centered up now, we've intercepted it. So let's get back on course. Pretty sure as long as we don't go below 3,600, we should be good for these hills. Well, you know, I'm not so sure anymore, just looking at it. I think 3,600 might plow straight into the top of it, I just land on top. So we might level out around 4,000 for the moment. Pretty happy with here. Here's good.
wonder how close we're we getting now. Seven minutes off, 40 nautical miles. We should have the coast just up ahead then. So that's how close we're getting. Not that we can see it yet. Because that's probably about oh what? 25, 30 miles off coast. Got a visibility of about 10. Nice peaceful country for VFR. At least when you get the whole skies to yourself. There's a ton of airports in England. I imagine the airspace is quite crowded. It's a very small place. A lot of people in it. Town. Looking like a bigger town in front, or up ahead. an airport here. It looks a bit like one, but at the same time kind of doesn't. That's why everything's all lined up in a row, you know, with nothing down the centre, but just my imagination. What is it? No, it's just my imagination. So are we now? Seven nautical miles. Our next heading, once we fly over it, will be at 190 degrees. So I'm going to set my heading bug to 190. We might as well start flying that right now. Set this to 190 as well. Back to 200. I think we can start to slowly descend. We go left. Three minutes. Yeah, we might drop it down to about 2,000 now.
point out that our ADF well, for the NDV at Cardiff has come live. It's here, it's pointing off in this direction, so Cardiff is off this way a little bit. And that's fine, that's what I want it to be, because I want to come in uh, and join up for runway 1 2. So basically, I'm wanting to hit almost hit the coast and then turn left and that should start heading me up in the right position in order to join the traffic pattern there. Keep hitting this way, I should hit the coast. Which we can actually see now. Looks to be coast. I don't think it's mountain ranges. One point six miles to hit the VOR. Just crossed over the BOR. If we're head, heading at 190, which is what we're currently on, we should hit the coast. Yeah. We shouldn't need this now, as long as we can get to the coastline below where we are. Need to keep an eye out for a factory near the coastline. It should be coming up oh, about 10 minutes time.
there's the factory. That's what we're after. The airport should be right next to it. Here we are, using the age-old pilotage. Looking for landmarks, finding our way that way. So if all has gone well, we've pretty much completed, well I won't say completed because we haven't landed yet, but we've at least navigated um, all this way. Only so far about 140 nautical miles in the old school method. Out following Little Magenta Line, which we don't even have in this GPS, so yay me! go to runway 12 so I'm going to set the heading bug up onto 12 right now so I don't have to worry about that later I do that because it helps me with lining up um, for the flight pattern uh, the traffic pattern and something I'd like to point out is I have two points of reference to let me know that I'm heading in the right direction one the factory that I thought I should see and two this needle pointing to the Cardiff NDB, which is directly ahead and a little bit to the left. And that is exactly where the airport should be, directly ahead and a little bit to the left. So I know we're good. Keep dropping my altitude. You shouldn't be too far off. Five minutes off. If that. Checklist. It's a checklist. Engine start, we've done take off, we've done climb, we don't need to worry about landing. Alright, 86, 73. Right, cool, cool, cool. Don't need that now. Just make sure I have everything in my head before doing it. Still forward now. Speed a little bit. Getting closer. Getting closer, I want to be around about 100 knots. 100 to 110 is fine, but I'd rather be 100. It gives me a little bit more time to react. Not much, but a little. Just about at the right speed and the right altitude. We'll be at a thousand feet. Join the pattern. We're at a hundred knots. So we're about right. Let's get some trimming happening. It's not too bad. So the airport should be here. Just to the left, anyway. That looks 
looks a bit Polish. with yeah that being the airport over here yeah it is yeah it is all right so let's try and join the upwind on the 45 for runway one two I probably just could have gone straight into base, but we'll do it this way. No doubt had ATC been on, it probably would have directed me to have uh, done that. Left base into runway 1-2. That just gives me a bit more practice flying the pattern, won't it? Plus you can see a little bit more of the scenery. This wonderful Orbex Cardiff Airport scenery. We'll want to be parking over here, which will be the general aviation area. Over here's our terminal. We're a bit too little for the terminal. Join on 45. Turn on to runway heading. Just one, two. the cross line, the crosswind. Alright, turn crosswind. Turn downwind. Drop our gear. Three green, cool. We'll trim a bit now. Flaps.
Turning base. Drop another notch of flaps. Out a bit. We're probably a bit low here, but it'll all work out. The downwind was a little bit too long, I think. Could have come in shorter. Last notch of flaps. Double check, three green. Space taken up there, but all good. We've landed. All right, let's lean for taxi. Exit here. things. Flaps are where they should be, trim where they should be, coatings where it should be, we can continue. Alright, so we need to head over to general aviation which will be to our left. Are we lean for taxi? Yes we are. here, she get us in the general direction. Definitely up ahead though. We'll take not this exit, the one following. Oh no, we'll take this one, I think. Let's have a look at it. Yep. This one it is. Checklists. Fuel pump off. 
Plates retracted, lights as required, yep, trims, everyone is required, bit of heat off, okay. So switching everything off. Heat off, park and brake is set, turn back off, yeah, radio masters are off. Throttle idle. Select to check, I don't know where that is. Mixture cut off. Alt off. Main switch off. Fuel selector off. Chocks on and covers. And we are done. Thank you very much for joining me on that flight. I had a little bit of fun doing it the old school way. I hope maybe some of you enjoyed it, perhaps maybe a few of you learned something, perhaps you didn't. Either way, thanks for the ride. Ciao.